Hey, let's take a look at event-driven programming. Basically, uh, the the definition of event-driven programming is program that program code that responds to an event. Uh, an event is something that is generated by your device, typically, or by your code. Uh, for example, this this little bit of code we have right here we've got a couple variables that were set up, and then we create a, a display object, a frog. And we center them in the middle of the screen and we, we give them a name of, of Philbert just for the fun of it. So if we run this, um, there's Philbert right in the middle of the screen there. And he doesn't do anything. And if we look back here at the code, the code starts up here at the top. It, it handles each one of these lines of code and it gets down here to the bottom and it's done. It sits there and it doesn't do anything else. With event-driven programming, we can write code that is actually an event listener and it listens for an event to happen. With Corona SDK you can write uh, event listeners that basically just kind of listen to everything and those are called runtime listeners and we'll get into those. Uh, or you can do uh, listeners that are that just belong to a specific object. For example we can go frog and then a colon add event listener and now we have the event name and the listener. So this event name, there are different events that are available for display objects. One of them is a tap event. And basically what that does is it, by adding an event listener to the frog and saying that it's for what we want, we care about a tap event. Every time the frog is tapped, it will send the program to whatever function we specify here as the listener. Okay, so what we're basically going to be doing is saying, yeah, we want we want to know when a tap happens. And so so our object is listening, our program is listening for uh, this tap. And when it happens, it will go to a specific set of code. So let's just call this, uh, let's say it's called um, tapped frog. All right, and so we have to make a, a function now that tapped frog, uh, called tapped frog, so that when this tap happens, it has some place to go. So right up here, let's go ahead and do a local function tapped frog and an event record will be passed in. And right here we could do um, print ouch just so that we know something happened. All right, let's go ahead and run this. And here we have our frog on the screen and you can see down here uh, the terminal area. So I'm going to go ahead and just click him and he says ouch. Click him again, he says ouch. Click him again, he says ouch. Alright, so what's happening here is we've got the frog on the screen, we've added an event listener to the frog, and when we tap the frog this code is called. That is cool. Um, that means that we can uh, set our program up to do something and then we don't have to mess with anything we don't have to just like well what do we do we just we sit here and twiddle our thumbs programmatically speaking until an event happens and then when we tap this uh, that event says oh there's a tap the frog is listening for taps and this code is run I mentioned the runtime events so let's just do a runtime and do add event listener and it's the same thing. We need an event name. Now, well, what kind of event does the runtime listen for? Lots of different things. But for the fun of it, um, let's say it's looking for orientation. And that's the orientation of the device, whether it's in portrait or landscape or what. And let's say it's a, a device, a device orientation. All right. So we need a function called device orientation. So right up here. And again, this is going to be passing in an event record. Whether we use it or not, that's up to us. In this case, we will, though. So now let's um, print event.type. And event.type uh, is, is the actual orientation of the device. So what's going to happen here? is we're going to uh, start the program. The program is going to get down to right under here. It will have uh, executed all of this code and then it sits there and stops and twiddles its thumbs. And we've got two event listeners going on now. The first one is a tap event on the frog. 
The second one is a runtime listener, and it is listening for uh, an orientation event. And that is something that we don't have to, it's like, well, how do we trigger that? We don't trigger that, the device triggers that. When, when the iPad or uh, uh, Nexus 7 or whatever device you're using is rotated, that device generates an event, and uh, in this case, it generates an, uh, an orientation event, and we grab it and do something. So let's go ahead and try that. And what's cool about the, uh, the Corona simulator is that it allows us up here under hardware, we can rotate left, rotate right, shake, suspend. So this is a command left and right arrow. So I'm just gonna do this from the arrow keys. And so let's uh, rotate right and see what happens. Okay, and we can see down here, it says portrait. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate right again. Landscape left. Again, portrait upside down. And one more time, and we get landscape right, which is where we started from. So if we click, uh, click Filbert, he says, ouch. Uh, and so we've got two event listeners going on here, handling the code as those events come in. And one more thing let's do up here under tapped frog. Uh, I'm, we, we pass in the event record. Event.target is the, uh, the object that was tapped or touched. And so event.target.name is the same as frog.name down here because frog, frog is our target and this name variable is filbert so we do event.target.name concatenate says ouch all right so let's go ahead and try that and uh, see if we can personalize this ouch click and filbert says ouch so we you can see that uh, name is being passed in there as part of this event record that goes in a tap event listener is really handy, but a lot of times what you'll end up using is a touch. And what's the difference between a touch and a tap? From a user standpoint, they're the same thing, but from a programming standpoint, a touch gives you more information. A tap just says a tap happened. A touch says a touch began. If there's any movement, it tells you about that and it tells you when a touch ended. And you may want to know that for something that you're doing. Um, the tap, it's just all together. It's one, basically one event. A touch is multiple events. So let's go ahead and uh, try that here. And we'll just change this to touched frog. The event record is still passed in. But now what we're gonna do is we'll, we will print the event.phase. And the phase of the event uh, tells us what is actually happening. So let's go ahead and try this. Okay, I'm going to click down but not let up on, on Filbert. Okay, it says began. I'm still holding the mouse button down here as if my finger was still touching the screen. I'm gonna move, moved, moved, moved. And now I'm gonna let up and Filbert says, ouch, ended. So we see the phases there. I'll just go ahead and uh, click without moving. We got a begin and an ended there. So we could actually see what is what is happening here. So a touched event is like, well, why do I need to know all that? Well, we're, we're gonna actually get into that uh, in the in the fro froggy way to hop in sample code. And there's a lot of good reasons why you might want to do that. Uh, in a lot of cases, if I'm if I'm just using a um, maybe just a button to go somewhere or doing something simple, I'll use a tap event. But there are a lot of cases where I'm I'm actually going to want the touch event. I'm I, I'm going to want to know the the, the phase wh whether the touch is beginning or the touch is ending. So there's a a, a quick look at uh, event driven programming, and there are there there are a ton of other. Um, event listeners and I'll leave a, a link to uh, a good resource on the Corona Lab site so you can so you can look into more of that if you want to. Uh, but let's go ahead and in the next video we're going to change our um, froggy went a hoppin code uh, to listen for taps on the lily pads.